நம்பிராஜன் நந்தீஷ் சுவாதி சோனராஜ் பேச்சியம்மாள் பல்லியப்பன் அமிர்தவல்லி சரண்யா மோகன் இசக்கி சங்கர் ஹூ ஆர் தீஸ் பீப்புள் அண்ட் வேர் ஆர் தே நவ் வணக்கம் திஸ் இஸ் டி சுரேஷ்குமார் அண்ட் தேங்க் யூ ஃபார் ஜாயினிங் மீ இன் திஸ் எபிசோட் ஆஃப் த ஹிந்து ஃபோக்கஸ் தமிழ்நாடு த பீப்புள் ஹூஸ் நேம்ஸ் ஐ ஹட் மென்ஷன் ஏர்லியர் ஆர் ஆல் நோ லாங்கர் அலை all of them were brutally murdered their sin falling in love and marrying outside the caste all these murders took place over the last decade in tamil nadu a few days ago one more name was added to this list praveen a scheduled caste youth he had married a girl belonging to the backward community and he was brutally murdered by a gang that was led by the girl's brother in law and mind you This latest crime did not happen in some remote village in Tamil Nadu but it occurred in Chennai the capital of Tamil Nadu very soon Praveen also could be forgotten but he may not be the last victim of such caste killings that the state has witnessed over the decades while some cases have hogged limelight for a prolonged period very few such caste crimes remain in the headlines for a longer duration and the ones that do end up as stark reminders of how we as a human race and society have failed to evolve and accept relationship beyond the barriers of caste and religion one of the earliest such crimes that shook tamil nadu was witnessed in 2003 in prudachalam in kadalu district a young chemical engineer burgesan who belonged to the scheduled caste had fallen in love with kannagi from the most backward community the couple eloped and got married However, the girl's family traced them, abducted the couple, brought them to the village, force-fed poison to them. Later, their bodies were dragged and set on fire, even as scores of villagers washed. Among those who witnessed this horrifying crime were the hapless family members of Murgesan. It took 18 years for the trial court to deliver the verdict in the case. Kannagi's brother was awarded the death sentence and her father and others were sentenced to life imprisonment. However, one year later, in 2022, the Madras High Court commuted her brother's death sentence. In fact, this was the case where for the first time, the term honor killing was used to describe caste-based murders. While the underlying theme of such crimes remains more or less the same, where couples who fall in love and elope against the wishes of family members are brutally attacked, the pattern in each case is different. For instance let's take a look at the case of Divya and Elavarsan. In 2012 Divya who belonged to a most backward community in Dharmapuri had married Elavarsan a Dalit. Eventually under societal pressure her father ended his life. This led to mass mobilization of the dominant community in Dharmapuri district who attacked three Dalit hamlets and burnt more than 200 houses. Eventually Divya also came under pressure from her community members and family and at one point she told the Madras High Court that she would prefer to go with her parents and removed the Mangal Sutra which Ilavarsan had tied. Some months later Ilavarsan was found dead along the railway tracks. Police investigation and inquiry by a judicial commission concluded that he had ended his life. While in this case there was no murder per se. the fact remains that elavarsan was pushed to take the extreme step due to caste pride ironically this case saw some political mobilization of a different kind at that point s ramdas the founder of patali makkal kachi who otherwise speaks of social justice and affirmative action floated a forum that comprised different caste groups that were opposed to dalits he said dalit youths sporting jeans t-shirts and sunglasses were enticing girls belonging to other communities and later on deserting them while this forum that was opposed to intercaste marriages involving dalits did not last long it is a fact that this led to caste mobilization among different groups and that was reflected in the murder of gokul raj an engineering student who belonged to the shedul caste he was beheaded by yuvraj who ran a very fringe caste group for having fallen in love with a girl ironically yuvraj was given a hero's welcome by his community members 
when he had gone to surrender to the police after absconding for some months. Another case that shook Tamil Nadu was the gruesome murder of Shankar who had married Kaushalya. This murder was captured on camera. In fact, there are cases of couples belonging to the same community who have fallen victim to such kind of crimes. One of the most prominent such cases is the uh, case of Nambi Rajan. A 21 year old youth, uh, his head was chopped off by family members of his wife, although they both belong to the same intermediate community. Here, the parents were opposed to the relationship because of his poor economic condition. Caste pride unfortunately exists even within the Dalit community as the case of Sole Raj and Pechia Malwood illustrate. This couple was murdered although they belong to scheduled caste but the problem was that one of them belonged to the Pallar community and the other one was from Parayar community. Likewise, the oppressor is not always the one belonging to the dominant community. Two years ago, a girl belonged to the scheduled caste, Saranya, had married Mohan, who belonged to an intermediate community. Within five days of the marriage, her brother had invited the couple home for a feast, and just as they entered the house, both of them were brutally murdered. Tamil Nadu has also seen cases where not just the couple, but even their children, in one case a 40-day-old infant, was murdered. Senior journalist Ilangovan Raj Shekhan, who has widely covered such crimes for the Hindu and Frontline, has documented such chilling cases in his recently released book, Sadi in Peral, Anava Kolegal Padigu, in the name of caste, a record of honor killing. And one chilling case is that of Nandish and Swati, who had eloped and married, but Swati's parents eventually called them for a compromise, took them to Karnataka and murdered them and threw their bodies in the river. It was found that they had even pierced the womb of Swati, which contained a three-month-old fetus. If you thought that such crimes are of recent origin, you are mistaken. Tamil folklore is replete with instances of such gruesome crimes. In fact, A.K. Pirmal, one of the most eminent folklorists, has uh, compiled a list of many such stories that have come to be narrated in Kanyan Kutu and Villupattu during village deity festivals. He says, Kani Chavu, a folk literature, describes such murders as Thetu Sadangu Kolai, that is murders of untouchability ritual. And most of these chilling stories belong to the 16th century. In 2006, in the Lata Singh versus state of UP, the Supreme Court had actually batted for intercaste marriages. It had said that intercaste marriages are in the national interest as it would destroy the caste system. Unfortunately, years after the Supreme Court made this observation, we continue to see murders in the name of caste and caste pride. One of the reasons that such crimes take place is also because mainstream political parties and leaders are not vocal in criticizing murders of such nature. In fact, none of the mainstream party leaders or political parties have condemned the murder of Praveen that took place in Chennai. The reason they do this is because these parties heavily rely upon the OBC community for its own bank. Besides, it's the OBC community that funds elections and therefore Dalits continue to be used as doormats in elections. Such caste pride also is perpetuated by politicians including ministers who participate in their caste-based organizations, events and celebrations. Sadly, it is not just people in villages and the semi-literates who perpetuate this feudal system of caste. Even educated people often take pride in the caste. In fact, very recently, one of the prominent gastro surgeons in Chennai advocated for using caste as surnames. He took pride in engaging members of his community to build one of his hospital blocks. This in a state which many decades ago pioneered the dropping of caste surnames. Unless mainstream political parties and leaders take the lead in condemning caste-based crimes and promoting intercaste marriages beyond the kind of incentives that the government gives, such kind of crimes will continue to happen in Tamil Nadu and elsewhere. Let's hope the society evolves for better. On that note, this is D. Suresh Kumar signing off. Thank you.